Nice to meet you, Ryan. Nice to meet Could you. Could you give a brief information about yourself and Orbs too? Of course. My name is Ryan Hammer. I lead business for Orbs. I've been with the project since 2017. Uh, I'm, I used to be a lawyer. I don't practice anymore. Got exposed to Bitcoin uh, in 2015. Uh, I had a couple of years still with a day job and then uh, <laughs> jump shipped uh, to Orbs. Um, Orbs were a layer three uh, blockchain infrastructure project. Uh, we act as a decentralized backend for DeFi, trying to bring CFI level execution into DeFi. Uh, we do advanced order types, liquidity aggregation, on-chain perpetuals, so we're trying to bring the best trading experience on-chain. Okay, thank you. So, can you explain more about the Orbs layer three blockchain? More information to the retail investors too? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So when we initially built Orbs, we didn't plan to be a layer three. Essentially, start building an L1. We initially targeted enterprises, trying to build like a public blockchain for enterprise. But enterprise adoption didn't really happen. We think it's still a while away. But DeFi really boomed. So during DeFi summer, we saw that we think what we think is the real like killer app for uh, blockchain being an on-chain trading. Uh, so we decided to use our infrastructure as an additional layer on top of existing L1s and L2s to essentially enhance what they can do so you can really bring good on-chain, um, good trading experience on-chain. So you would use us, again, in addition to like an L1 and L2. So we work with um, likes of PancakeSwap or SushiSwap. They're working on BNB or Ethereum mainnet or other L1s or L2s. And essentially using our technology, can, they can provide better trading experience to their users. Okay, so what do you think the biggest technical challenge is in achieving the goal of implementing DeFi at the level of C? Yeah, so that's a very good question. I would say there's multiple things that we need to improve. One is everything that has to do with uh, availability. You need to have the best uh, solutions available on chain. So for example, you don't have very good, you didn't have very good uh, on-chain perpetuals. You have some projects building it, but it's not the level it is in, in, in CFI. So we did, um, so, so, so this is one thing, you want to have the same available, uh, uh, the same kind of use cases available on chain. Second is everything that has to do with uh, uh, abstraction. Like a lot of people talk about the cloud abstraction, but essentially being able to just log in with Google or, or, or Naver and being able to uh, interact in a way that's simple, not with complex smart wallets, on desktop, with MetaMask. So just being able to have a better experience, like abstract away the technology, the technology uh, away from the user, for the user to be able to really interact in a way that's seamless. And I would say the, the third one is, is the need to aggregate, like the problem fragmentation, because liquidity is very, very fragmented across different, different chains, different venues within chain, even different pools within the same venue. So um, that's also a big, a big challenge. So, yeah, so uh, I would say abstraction and aggregation are the biggest challenges. I think that can be like be solved by other protocols like working on like chain abstraction and things. Many projects are working on it, so I think they can be the mass adoption can come maybe in the future, maybe. Yeah, I agree. One of the main projects we're working with now is uh, Ton. The Ton via the Telegram app has a very yeah, sure. a very strong go to market for adoption and with their whole like abstracted experience using uh, uh, the app wallet on Tone is something that we strongly believe in. Just just one example, yeah, yeah, there are yeah. many projects uh, targeting this. So so about Tone, recently like the new ecosystems like Telegram and Tone are gaining the industry attention as you mentioned. So how is support for these networks being conducted by our org? Okay, so we've, so we've been following, uh, tele so we're obviously we're Telegram users, all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just exchanged Telegram yeah, before this interview. Sure. So we've been using Telegram for many years. When Telegram had the very initial plans in Gram to have their own blockchain, uh, we were very supportive and participated in that. That obviously was shut down by the SEC in 2018. But ever since then, we we're following all the different forks, seeing who does what with the code base. And then when we saw that Tone was really picking up, we wanted to be involved very early, ever since like the very early mining period of, of Tone. And um, the way we kind of helped is by building very core infrastructure stuff that was missing on Tone. 
So today, powered by Orbs, we have the tool to mint new tokens, Ton Minter, uh, the tool to verify smart contracts. Uh, we're the biggest RPC on Ton. We're the biggest governance platform on Ton. So we build those kind of like peripheral core stuff you need for, for a strong ecosystem. And we do that using Orbs technology and our resources. Um, and yeah, that's why that's one of the ecosystems we mostly believe in right now. I think that's a great information because some users, some retail investors wouldn't know that information about Orbs, too, so that's very good. So you mentioned that the liquidity fragmentation in the DeFi protocols is a very big hurdle. So can you elaborate on how this fragmentation impacts the user experience and overall market efficiency? Yes, of course. So I would say the biggest effect of, of liquidity fragmentation is essentially worse prices on chain. So obviously the price uh, is, is a factor of the available liquidity. You know, the bigger the swap, the lower the liquidity, the worse price impact you have on any trade. So the more liquidity available, the better prices are. But what happens is liquidity is, liquidity is very fragmented because again, different chains, different DEXs, different pools. While by aggregating, by getting as much liquidity available from as many sources as possible, that's really the way you can achieve better prices. So I would say the biggest problem with fragmentation is worse prices, and the way to solve that is with aggregation. Uh, it's kind of a li uh, liquidity question. So can you explain the concept of liquidity aggregation uh, in the DeFi ecosystem? And why is it becoming a crucial focus for decentralized exchanges? Right, so I'll give a very, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll explain by giving an example. So we work with multiple DEXs, let's say QuickSwap, for example, on Polygon. Um, they're a very successful DEX. They get a lot of, like, a lot of volume coming in through their pools. But still, specifically, um, you would, when you go in their UI, and you come to swap, you'll get a price that's worse than any of the aggregators. So they're not competitive. And how can you improve the prices? You can tap into additional liquidity. So with our product, powered by Orbs L3, we have Liquidity Hub. Essentially, we connect Liquidity Hub as a layer on top of the AMM, and then we aggregate different uh, liquidity sources, being um, market makers, so off-chain solving, uh, just other aggregators, so we're like a meta aggregator, so uh, other liquidity sources available, also cross-chain liquidity as well. And then every time the user comes to swap, you check against all existing liquidity. You see where the best prices is, and that's where the user gets to do the trade. That's where the liquidity goes. And in addition, you can use partial fields. You can do like half of the trade goes here, half of the trade goes there. You can do multi-hops. Sometimes it would make more sense to, you know, I want to trade uh, W ETH for WBTC, but maybe it's better to do ETH to MATIC and MATIC to WBTC. So all that kind of technology and algorithms working together, all bidding, essentially gives them the better prices for the users. Oh, okay. All right, as the DeFi space continues to grow, do you believe that DEXs can eventually offer better pricing than now in central exchanges? So the question is yes, definitely because DeFi has a very big advantage over CeFi in one specific respect, being composability. In CeFi, everything is gated, everything is centralized. And if you want liquidity to be shared, you need to have active market makers with sharing liquidity between you know, OKX and Binance or Upbit and Beta. In DeFi, everything can be atomic and everything can be composable. So essentially, with good enough aggregation, with good enough on-chain solving, you can essentially have an atomic swap, use all available liquidity. There are still some uh, challenges. For example, cross-chain solving is not atomic yet, and, and you know, not everyone can tap into all existing liquidity, but um, as the industry progresses, I think it's very um, plausible that we will see better prices on DEXs. And now when you look today, around 20% of all volume is on-chain as compared to 80% centralized. But I think the on-chain volume is going to grow and grow and potentially surpass uh, C5. Yeah, I believe in DeFi too. So. so what does the Korean market really mean to Orb? Oh, it means everything to Orb. <laughs> so, uh, no, but we've been, we've been active in Korea since 2018, since before the token launch. Uh, the main uh, launch event for the token was here in Korea in 2019. Our first exchange to list Orbs was Bitham very early on, then we had Abit and all the different exchanges we have today. But uh, Korean uh, market is very important for us. We have a very strong holder base in Korea. We also have uh, a lot of our guardians, which is essentially the Orbs validator node. Orbs is a, a delegated POS system, so we need to have nodes running our system in order to provide decentralized services. 
So a lot of the node runners are actually uh, from Korea, oh, really? be it big players such as uh, uh, Bitham or even like people from home um, who are just big holders or run communities and are validating from home. So Korea is a very important market for us. We're happy to be here. This is my fifth time in Korea. So I'm happy to be here every year for KBW and um, happy to you know, invest resources in Korean market. We have two people full-time in Korea, Eddie and Edward who are running our community. So uh, it's a very important market for us and we're very happy to have this kind of positive feedback loop with our Korean community and Korean. Okay, so lastly, if uh, is there any question that you would like to answer? Any question you would like to answer? Yeah, maybe plans for, for, the, the, for yeah. the future. Yeah, what's the plans for orgs? Yeah, so the plans for orgs really, uh, we've had a few years where we are kind of exploring. We built this amazing, what we believe is an amazing tech okay. uh, network platform. And we had the question of, okay, what is this useful for? And we're exploring, we're trying different things. I feel like last year and this year really figure out where we bring value, which is with on-chain trading. So our focus is really to um, utilize our technology to enhance the experience in on-chain trading and also have as much volume as possible flow through the different orbs, orbs uh, use cases, protocols. Some of these protocols, such as Perpetual Hub, Liquidity Hub, even to Open Limit now, are already generating revenue. We hope to increase the revenue that's being generated. And then with this existing um, add-on revenue generation, I think we'll be able to implement new tokenomics that will be very interesting. But uh, first, we need to really get a good uh, revenue generation on chain, which is something we're really focused on. Okay. It was a very nice interview. And thank, thank you very you much for having me. And have a nice day in Korea. Thank, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Yes.